Now, I, I, I like asking this question because I, I've always told people, when, when, you know, I talk about me doing the war in Chirac, I've always said that if I, if I did it now, being in my 30s and having damn near almost 15 years of experience in the media, I would do it so much different. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, I used to look at it from a very naive, narrow perspective. I was like, yo, these guys are calling themselves savages. And if they're doing crime... These guys are inhumane. Right. These guys, you know, they, 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 whatever. Right. And yeah, you use a lot of bad words back in yeah, the day, academics. Yeah. Right? I, I, we don't I, talk though, baby. No, Come no. on. So, so, but but I, I did. No, I, I've, I've admitted this. I, I <laughs> lack the understanding of understand uh, of understand the perspective. Yeah. There, there was maybe of a lack of empathy for what was like. For example, if you had went out and did something, I'm like. I'd probably talk about you very negative, like you're just a fucking idiot. Right. Like yeah. you're you're a cancer. But but again, it's trauma, right? Like you seen your homie pass away. Right. You tat him on your face. Absolutely. That probably encouraged a rage inside of you. Absolutely. That unless uh, unless somebody had to go through that at 15, who probably are still you have still have a developing brain. Sure. I could never understand the pain right. and probably the thirst for revenge you felt at that point. Right. Right? Let me put it into your perspective like this, right? My mother raised three boys, single mom, worked and went to school her whole life. Now she got like two, maybe three degrees or something like that. Um, we were so close as friends that Scooby got killed. I came in the house the next morning. None of us went to sleep, I remember. I remember like it was yesterday. Scooby got killed. It started raining. None of us went in the house you know, everybody split, went their separate ways. We went and did what we do. Of course, I ain't going to say too much. Um, and I came in the house, and I had an S with angel wings on my face. I'm 15 years old at the time. It was so surreal that my mother, in my mind, I'm thinking, my mother about to beat the shit out of me when I get in the house, right? I come in the house. She like, boy, is you all right? I'm like, yeah, man, I'm all right. She like, nah, for real, is you okay? I'm like, yeah. She like, what's that on your face? I said, it's an S with angel wings. She didn't ask me, boy, is you stupid? Is you crazy? Why you do that? None of that. She was like, I understand. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And mind you, growing up my whole life, my mother always told me, never get tattoos on your hands. Never get tattoos on your neck or your face. You ain't going to be able to get a good job. Well, at 15, I, my first, one of my first tattoos, because my first tattoo was like MOE, which stood for money over everything on my arm. My second tattoo was my first love. I got a girl tattooed on my neck. And my third tattoo was the S with angel wings on my face. We were so deep in the streets that my mother seen that and was like, she ain't even question me. She was like, I understand. And I think that's, at that point, me and her both, without verbally agreeing, we both looked at each other and agreed, I'm in the streets forever now. Like, getting a job, going to the NFL, going to the NBA, it's over with. They killed Scooby and... We got to go do what we got to do. And and that's hard. Like, now, looking back, now that I, I, I got three kids now, you know what I'm saying? Looking back, I'm pretty sure I stressed my mother the fuck out. I, I was just about to ask, how tough yeah. do you think her job was? Like, you know, I, I've my mom raised three boys, you know, um, yeah. pretty much by herself because she split with my dad early on. And, um, shoot, you know, as you were saying that when you came in the house, you thought she was going to, uh, what my I'm ass like, like? I always tell. I was just, I'm from Jamaica. I was born in Jamaica. Right. My mama know how to beat a a, a, a 16, 17, 18 year old man. Yeah. Like a man. Like a man. Yeah. yeah. She, she, trust me. She, hey, she, she, she not one of them people who be like, I'm gonna get your uncle. Oh, I'm gonna send you to your daddy. She gonna handle that. My mother the same way, man. My mother instilled fear in us from day one. You know what I'm saying? Like so, like I said, I was real scared, but at the same time. I knew that I was coming in there to, um, I was coming in there to change clothes and um, clean myself up and get rid of the clothes that I had on. So I was really on a mission, for real, for real. I was trying to be in and out, mm. and um, I think she knew because she ain't dumb. You feel me? My mother, she very educated. You know what I'm saying? She ain't dumb. You feel me? Scooby got killed. He ain't came in the house the whole night, and my best friend Tay, I know for a fact she called Tay mother and was like, "Hey, did Tay come in?" And I know Penny was like, Penny is Tay mother. Penny probably was like, nah, Tay ain't coming to the house. Yeah, well, you know Scooby I killed last night. Yeah, Trail ain't coming to the house either. I can imagine how that conversation went. One yeah. plus one equal two. 
You know what I'm saying? Come in the house, I'm trying to change clothes. I'm trying to clean myself up. And you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, I'm sick. I'm nauseous. I'm nervous. I'm scared. You know what I'm saying? Um, it was a lot, man. You know what I'm saying? That's a crazy thought that she probably didn't say. You my son. I don't want to lose you. You're not leaving this fucking house. Mm -hmm. Go upstairs. And I know this is, some, this is tough. You lost your friend. Yeah. But I'm not letting you walk out of that house. Yeah. So, so I get why you're like, yo, that was an understanding where, she, where she's smart enough to know when you walked out of that house what it was. Yeah. And I had that look in my eye like, my mother, I'm not one of them Anger. dudes. I'm not one of them dudes who, who going to sit here and fake and, like I grew up. Yeah, my mother knew what it was. Nah, I feared my mother my whole life. She whooped the brakes off us. I feared my mother my whole life. Every decision I made walking out the house, I always thought about what my mother going to do if I get caught. You know what I'm saying? But that day, that specific day, I believe she looked me in my eyes and she asked me, was I okay? I said, yeah. She said, no, for real. I know how close she was with Scooby. Is you okay? I said, yeah, I'm all right. And she looked at me and said, what's that on your face? I told her what it was for. And she moved out the way. Walked back to my room, did what I did, blah, 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 and, and left. It, 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 I think she looked me in my eyes and knew that I, it, it didn't matter what she would say on that day, I was going to go do what I what I had to go do. How did you feel, though? You know, if you had to reflect on it, did you feel anger, hurt, or you just felt you needed revenge? Like, what um, was that feel? Because, like... Did you break down crying? Like, like ooh. hell yeah, we broke. I mean, we broke down crying out on the scene. Like, you know, he got killed. That like, like I told you, I, I saw. You know, what I'm saying it's a parking lot. My neighborhood got a big parking lot. Scooby got killed at the bottom of the parking lot. He was sitting in the stolen car smoking. I think he was with a female, and um, they pulled up, shot him with a pump. You know, what I'm saying shot him in the head, killed him. Um, when you see that, you feel me? We in what? Seventh grade, I believe, maybe eighth. Um, so you you went to the scene that you seen. Yeah, like you hit a, you hit a, so boom, you hit a gunshot. You hit a car alarms going off. Well, that's the first thing that go off after you hit shot. Car alarms go off. Now we trying to, everybody checking on everybody. Who got hit? You got hit? You got hit? Nah, who got hit? What's, what's such and such? I don't know. Scooby down at the bottom of the parking lot, he in a, a UU smoking with the bitch. UU is a stolen car. He in a UU smoking with a bitch. Go check on Scooby. All right, bet. We run down there. You can hear the girl screaming. Ah, ah. Scooby. Go right there. It's Scooby. You know, they just killed Scooby. So, first of all, you see that. Then, that's when everybody gets to call 911. Get him out of the car. Don't touch him. Everybody got their, you know what I'm saying? And, and that's, but yeah, we saw it. Yeah, you seen it up close and personal for sure. Wow. So, th that grief of y'all breaking down, like, what the fuck? turns almost into rage. Absolutely. Wow. Because you get to ask the girl, what you see? I saw what kind of car. It was what color. Yeah. It was a white. Now they do be riding in the, start doing your math. Then everybody just start making decisions. What y'all going to do? We going to sit around here and cry? You know what I'm saying? Or we going to go, what's up? Put your boots on. Lace them up. And if you don't lace them up, and you realize the decision that you're making right then and there amongst your friends. Because we didn't all grow up, like I said, second, third, fourth. Yeah. We didn't all grew up. So when you make a decision to not participate, you know you, you clearly made a decision to not even want to hang around this area no more. It's like boys in the hood. Absolutely. It's like boys in the hood. Absolutely. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, you could tell boys in the hood was a, was a, was a movie. I'm going to just say that. That was a movie. How they... You know, gave Trey a pass for not one. Of, that was a movie. Ricky died with you. Ricky died with you. You supposed to be on. The, you supposed to have the most bullets in your clip. He was with you. Doesn't it kind of work like that? Like if if, if one of the, say y'all all grew up with your friend, right? And even if someone was, he was the closest person, there and he's like, "Nah, this ain't me. Nah, I'm good." Okay, well. If it ain't you, right? Why why hang with Ricky? Number one, number two. Mm. What's the name of the little block where they went to and it was, it was lit? Where yeah, the dude yeah, first yeah. bumped them originally? Yeah, yeah. You like to hang with Ricky all the time. 
Y'all go and hang out at these dangerous spots all the time. So now when shit get real, now you want to fall back. You just, give, you just give me a whole different perspective on that whole movie now. Ricky friend, man. You know what I'm saying? And look, we not even saying that you have to turn into a super cold-blooded killer after this. But let's go see who did this to Ricky. And after that, you can still go to college. Be with your girl. Chase your dreams. And, do, and yeah, let's put this behind us because we know this ain't you. But dog, he was with you. Could have been you. Imagine us not jumping in this ride about Trey. Man, we going to go ride for Trey, man. That's our dog. Mm. You just gave pretty much a comp- I never thought about it. Like, I've, like I, I've always thought about it like, yeah, he was the guy that wasn't like that, but but you just brought up a point. He was hanging around with all the guys that was like who that. was like that and in the situations around other people that was like that. Right. And last but not least, right, because I'm a fair nigga. I'm a real nigga. I'm fair. Let's say you don't want to get in the car and slide. Man, give a, go get your father pistol. We need all the artillery we could get. Contribute to something. Contribute to some type of get back for Ricky, man. If you don't want to roll, that's cool. Go in the back, get your father a gun, and give me all the extra bullets you see in him. Man, we about to go slide for Ricky. You got to participate in some way, shape, or form. Go steal us a car. Go go get a low. Go get a drop for Do something. Yeah, do something. Just, just don't be like, hey, I'm, I've been on the sidewalk this whole time. I don't know what y'all doing right yeah, now. Yeah, don't do that because you ain't been on the sidewalk. You've been with us. Mm. You've been with us. Wow. That that was a moment um, I could imagine you probably saw, probably went through a range of emotions, not only grief, but also seeing your own life changing, right? Absolutely. And I, I think in that moment, you also make the choice where you now also become a target, right? Absolutely. Where, where, where someone's like, you know, oh, this guy's offended that whatever happened. Yeah. Oh, oh, he think he going to do whatever. Yeah. Oh, he must think that we can't do something to him. Exactly. So now you got to walk around a little bit different and a little bit, maybe, I don't know if necessarily in fear, but you got to walk around looking around to see if. We call it being on point. We call it in DC. We call it on point. Now from here on out, just be on point. Just mm. be on point. How did life drastically change after that for you? <clears throat> Moving more militant. Um, we no longer catching the bus no more by ourselves. Because you got to think, this is back in the day where we caught the bus and the train or anywhere. All right, well, now we ain't catching the bus or the train no more unless we five deep. Um, if we do leave the neighborhood, there need to be at least one pistol with us. Because I ain't going to sit here and fake like we had super big, wild, heavy artillery when we was 14, 15, 16. It probably used to have been seven niggas on two guns back then. You know what I'm saying? So, um... Now we more militant minded. We moving more on point. Um, we not going to every go go no more. We not going to um, go see every bitch in every neighborhood no more because we East Street bangers now and and you know people know our face now. Our, our, our MySpace pages is, is is growing like motherfuckers know who we is. You feel me? So we got to move different. What about the elders? Because a lot of times when we talk about this, and I, I know this is about Chicago, it, there wasn't a lot of maybe older people who are seeing a situation starting to devolve into maybe continual violence, mm-hmm. right? Where it's like, like, you know, not to bring it to something else, but like, imagine even think about, um, even though it's not kids necessarily either, but think about like Memphis, the passing of Dolph created a whole wave of violence. Yeah. A lot of times. And again, I'll, I'll also say this about me doing the war in Chirac. I used to just think of things as, okay, it ended there, yeah. right? Not that, well, you, you know that younger cousin, yeah. that younger brother who looked up to that, that was his hero. Yeah, He watched his brother take his last breath. Absolutely. He'll never be okay again. Absolutely. And he feels like if he doesn't do something, so, so now when you criticize him about doing something, his life was already changed yeah. before he, before. He did what he did by him witnessing that. Mm-hmm. Was there any like older people or, you know, I don't want to say necessarily OGs that might have like started to see like, yo, let's see if we could, you know, get this at least neutralized. You can't get it fixed at that point, but. Um, I'm going to be honest, man. Not in my city. In Washington, D.C., 
I'm going to tell you how it go. And this is unfortunate, right? But I got to keep it 100 with you, man. Never, never may know when I get to sit down with Ak again, man. Um, when that shit happened, first of all, shootouts bring police, detectives, crime scene, yellow tape, all this shit, right? So the, the older dudes around our way who hustling, like, look, man, I don't know what the fuck y'all did at the go-go or, you know, who girl y'all fighting over, whatever, man. I need it, man. Y'all got to handle that shit because we ain't about to keep having them niggas pull around here, had the police all up and down the block. They fucking up the money. You know what I'm saying? Man, Shawty, y'all need to go out and handle that shit. You hear me? That's what our old heads was on. Man, Shawty, y'all need to go handle that shit. What y'all going to do? Y'all sitting right here crying and going over memories and he dead. Y'all got the information. What you going to do? Unfortunately, I'm going to keep it real. That's just how it go in the hood. What y'all going to do? And the real good old heads... I might pull a, 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 a good one or two young niggas up and be like, look, I got this. Take this. Mm. Do what you do. You know what I'm saying? That's how I go in the hood. That's how I go wow. in the hood. Keep it in the hundred. That's how I go. You might have one good dude who was like Sharif off uh, yeah. in the sister side. You might yeah. have one Sharif in the neighborhood. I ain't going to lie. Yeah. I have one, maybe two Sharifs in the neighborhood. But for the most part, it's, man, what y'all going to do? Yeah, they, plant, they, they play with y'all. You 15, 16 years old, now is the time for you to set the record straight from here on out, what you about to do. And that's mm. how it was. Okay. So, this is coming off you being 15. Yeah. I could imagine a whole bunch of stuff happened, stuff that, you know, it's probably only between you and God at that Absolutely. point. Absolutely. How does the music enter into this? Okay. Well, first and foremost, I, I always was into music. I always poured the pots and pans out from under the kitchen sink and beat on the pots and drums, you feel me? Um, you went to church? Yeah, when my mother did take us to church, I used to like to sit beside the drummer. Really? Yeah. I used to play drums and the, and the piano. Um, got it from church. And any, anytime I hear someone with drums or they used to play piano early, yeah. that's at that church, church right Yeah. There. My mother gave me like two drum lessons and then... I don't know what happened. I just stopped going to the drum lessons. But I did want to learn how to play the drums. Um, I forgot what the fuck was <laughs> what the fuck you mean. Yeah, so uh, we're talking about how do we get into music from... Oh, okay. You know, so first and foremost, I always loved music. You feel mm -hmm. me? Um, boom, third grade. I came home from school. I was like, Monty having a talent show. What should I do? She was like, man, you should rap. I was like, all right, so what song should I do? Were you a shy kid? Nah, I wasn't never a shy kid. I always wanted to be a rapper or entertainer, so I was always well-spoken and, you know what I'm saying, outspoken. Like, I wanted to entertain. Youngest I wasn't a class clown, but I wanted to entertain. I wanted to show off my skills, for sure. You were the youngest, right? Yeah, the youngest out of three boys. I was the youngest. I'm the youngest out of three boys, too. Yeah. I think there's a thing about the youngest that kind of makes you want to like do better than your two other brothers Absolutely. and you know like i mean we, we can even see it like respectfully i, I think lebron james youngest kid is gonna be the best i i, <laughs> I think it's the reason why Lamelo ball is the best <laughs> right like, you know, I, as the youngest son first of all the oldest son gonna be mama's Fav well, not favorite but but she's gonna think about it's the crazy. fucked up position she was in when she had him yeah, I had him when he was, I was a little young. I didn't really know whatever, whatever. That was like, mm. so she's going to excuse anything he does because right. she's going to say, I had him when I was super young. I didn't know what to do. But by the time you're the third, she thinks she's a great parent. Yeah, yeah. So now you don't got no excuse. So you got to go extra hard. Yeah, absolutely. And the middle child sometimes gets to skate by. Yeah. So so you got to really go hard. So, okay, so 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 good. So, so you're, you're not a... You're not a shy person or like that. Yeah. She said you should rap. You yeah. agree? I agree. Um, I said, but I'm, what song am I going to do? Because I was thinking like, you know, just rap an uh, industry song that's already out. She was like, nah, write a rap. Really? Yeah, this third grade. A lot of you not. She like, write a rap. I'm like, write a rap. She's like, yeah, write a rap. So I, I wrote a rap called My Ghetto Neighborhood. Really? Yeah, no cursing. And I performed it at the talent show, and I won the talent show. You know what I'm saying? And um, that was when I knew, when I wrote my Who first. Who were you listening to? To, to even like, like, 
Scarface at that age. Really? Yeah, I was listening to a lot of Scarface. Why? Um, his message and his voice. You feel me? Like I let me give you an example of me as a kid, right? Um, I played Martin Luther King in my church. I did the old the whole I have a dream speech. I wore the hat, I walked down the aisle with the briefcase. They made me stand on these um crates and stand at the pulpit. I did Martin Luther King. You remember the whole speech though? Yeah, I did the, yeah, I did the speech. No, do you remember it to this day? Nah, hell no. Nah. <laughs> hell no, nah, nah. I did the whole speech and um you know, I wasn't never no super nervous kid, you know what I'm saying? Um after I won the talent show, the arts teacher asked my mother, could I play the line in the in the Wiz play? Not the Wizard of Oz, but the Wiz, you know, the Michael Jackson and Diana Ross and them. So it just led me to always entertaining people, you feel me? And then um when I knew that I could write a rap, I'm like, oh, I could really rap, you know what I'm saying? And so Scarface, it was just something about this song. My first Scarface song I ever heard was Money and the Power. And when I heard the song, the way he told a story, the way um, he flew his brother down and was trying to help his brother out, but he was chasing pussy too hard. The way he put that all together, I was like, yo, this is what I want to do. You know what I'm saying? And at the same time, crisscross that came out. Jump, jump, let me act that and make you jump, yeah. jump. So I'm looking at them on TV and I'm like, oh shit, it's kids rapping. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh nah, I could be a rapper. You feel me? And so, boom. And then later on, you start to see Romeo and Bow Wow and it's like, oh, I right, yeah. And then Bow Wow did the Like Mike movie. And of course, you like yeah, shit. Yeah, that Like Mike movie was crazy. Yeah. <laughs> and everybody wanted to be either Romeo or Bow Wow in some way, shape, or form. I ain't saying like wanted to be like them, but you wanted to be a famous acting kid or a famous kid rapper you wanted to be that you feel me and so yeah but I was listening to a lot of Scarface early Scarface Wayne Gucci and Ross mm. heavily wow okay so you so you win that talent show yeah does your mom tell you to keep doing music yeah because like I said after the, after I win the talent show they asked me to do the, play the lion in the Wiz when I played the lion I did so good we made the newspaper we made the Washington Post like the Washington Post came and watched the whole play. They took pictures of us and they put our picture in the Washington Post. So we did real good. Mm. What happens next? Um, well, I got into sports. I got into sports. Um, I always like used to write raps or whatever. And I used to, um, excuse me, I used to walk around the neighborhood and battle rap and, you know, beat on the garbage can and rap and shit like that. But we never really... Did, so, did you have the name Fat Trail at that point or no? Nah, I, I actually was calling myself, you ain't going to believe this. What? Homicide. Homicide? Yeah. That was my first rap name, Homicide. Goddamn. Yeah. <laughs> I used to call myself Homicide. All my cousins and she used to be like, bro, you're not going to. Yeah, that's not the one to make it. Yeah, man. you're not going to make it. Yo, like, introducing the newest rapper who's coming on <laughs> SNL, Homicide. Uh, yeah, like, I call myself Homicide, but, um. I always wanted to be a rapper, man, for real. And so, boom. So let me give you a... I'm going to try to make it short. I'm sitting outside my mother's building one day. Me and my homie, we outside rapping. And this dude walked past. And I always seen this dude. He was a very well-dressed dude. He always wore suits. He always smoked weed. And he always had a lot of girls coming in our house. Never knew what he did, though. He drove a Z. You remember them Zs? The little two-door Zs? He drove a little Z, Right? So one day we outside rapping, he walk up to me, he like, yo, I ain't need no rapper, but I could spit a rap right now. It's going to be better than you. I'm like, huh? So the nigga spit a rap. He spit his little rap. I spit my rap. He like, hey, you want to go to the studio? So in my mind, I'm like, man, this nigga ain't going to take me to the studio. I don't even know this nigga. You feel me? But I'm like, yeah, I want to go. You want to take me? He like, yeah, I know what apartment you live in. When I come knock on your door, just be ready. I'm like, all right, whatever. A couple days later, he really came knocking on my mother's door. I was like, yo, my name Dakari. I'm here to take your son to the studio. And he took me to the studio for the first time. And I made, I never forget, I made a song called No Raw. You know what I'm saying? It, which is, it's on YouTube to this day. That was my first song I ever recorded. A lot of people don't know this. That was my first song I ever recorded. And uh, when I heard my voice on the track, 
I fell in love. I knew for a fact that this is what I want to do right here. Really? Yeah. So when I heard my voice for the first time, like being recorded, I was like, oh, man, I sound terrible. No <laughs> oh, so, so, so you already knew, like, you, you kind of had something there. Yeah, because I was, um, you know, I was like 15 at the time. So I was, of course, when I'm rapping, I'm trying to make myself sound older. But I'm also trying to find my Washington, D.C. swag. I don't want to sound like a New Yorker, but I don't want to sound like I'm from the South Hill. I want to sound like a Washingtonian. So I was trying to find my voice, but I also trying to sound older at the same time. And when I heard myself on the record, take it out the jar, divide them in the fours, bag them real fat, burn the bag, no raw, can't forget my strap, pack of cigarettes, grab my phone, tell them bitches call, don't text. Once I heard that, I'm like, oh yeah, I'm about to be a rapper. Fuck everything, I want to rap. I quit football, basketball, everything, and I was just... I dropped out of school, too. I ain't gonna lie. I dropped out of school. I was just hustling and rapping. Yeah, I, I think historically we look back, and I, I don't know if I just got some wild and same theory. I think people, I think a lot of dudes who end up being a little bit bigger, they got away with words. And I, I don't know if that's something that comes before the music where you you've had to been you had to had a have a way with words to either get women or whatever. Of course. So like, or every like if we talking about big pun, if we talking about Fat Joe, we talking yeah. about Biggie, yeah. we talk like a lot of dudes who are a little bit bigger. Like they have yeah. that little finesse with the, the, we, the. We got to because one, not to cut you off. We got to because one, society looks at fat as unattractive, right? Mm-hmm. So I got to put a little bit of extra sauce on it because I need you to believe that there is no greater human than the fat human. That's number one. You know what I'm saying? And then um, you got to be, you got to, you got to want to be a dude that the bitches want to be around. And so you get to develop certain traits and certain skills to become a smooth, fat, fly nigga. Now, if you notice in my raps, I always call myself Fat and ugly, a fat and ugly, dirty motherfucker. I always call myself fat and ugly, so I never claim to be a cute nigga. Man, I'm pretty, I'm handsome. I never, that was never my swag. Man, I'm fat and ugly, I'm dirty. What's up? You know, man, I'm getting a money. Self deprecated, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Like, so I always had to add a little bit of gifted game to my shit because I had to put a little bit of extra sauce on my shit. I was a fat nigga, you know what I'm saying? I think that's the same thing Drewski be doing. Drewski know what, they, what the hell he be yeah, doing. Yeah, yeah. I'm telling you, 